Crystal Palace right now are mid-table in the Premier League, and that does sound decent, but when you compare them to some other teams, they are getting left behind. West Ham United, Aston Villa and Brighton are all playing European football and are doing much better than Palace in the Premier League this year. Don't get me wrong, I think Roy Hodgson is a great manager, but I think he's taken Palace as far as he can. So today, Crystal Palace are under new management. I'm taking charge of them, and by the end of this video, I'll be making them the best team in the world. So this is the Crystal Palace team I've loaded into, and whilst on paper it doesn't look that impressive, I promise you there's some balls we can build this team around. For example, these ever rich AS, he's only 25 years old and already 80 overall. There's also the captain of this team, Mark Gee, who's only 22 years old but 78 overall as well. We can turn this guy into a beast. And my personal favourite, Michael Olis, who's only 21 years old and 78 overall. I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep him in this Palace squad. But whilst we have some really good players to work with, there's also some problems at Crystal Palace. Like this stupid contract situation I've just walked into if I don't sort these contracts out we're going to lose half of our squad and to be fair the average age of this team isn't exactly young fair amount of players in this palace team are above 30 years old but on the flip side majority of our best players aren't even close to touching 30 so that is a good thing so overall boys whilst this team on paper doesn't exactly look that good we have got a very good team on our hands and for a change I want to use the kick and rush tactical vision I've seen a lot of people use this in the past and I want to see what all the fuss is about as for the formation I'm going for the 4-2-3-1 narrow. I know we use this quite a lot, but we've got a couple of cams, a couple of wingers, a couple of defensive midfielders. It is literally spot on for Crystal Palace. And after messing around with the team a bit, this is the strongest starting 11 we can field. And I know it's not exactly amazing right now, but we've got a full transfer window to improve this squad. But we will only have 45 million to spend. But this transfer window, as you probably guessed, is a little bit different from the others. I have to purchase players in alphabetical order, starting with A all the way down to Z. And I will be going alphabetically from their surname so players like Adam Hlozek I can't purchase just yet but I could go in for Trent Alexander-Arnold although his market value alone is almost twice the amount that we've actually got in our budget like I said boys this transfer window is going to be different from the others but well, the question is where do we put this 45 million because as you can see boys there's a lot of room for improvement we've got Joel Ward who needs replacing he's only got 51 pace for goodness sake and he's 74 rated yeah this one's a no brain we could do with a better winger than Sloppy is 30 years old now he's not exactly got the stats for a winger either and we could do with a better striker than Edward I'm not sure how Palace fans feel about him in real life but right now I'm not feeling this guy at all but I personally don't think 45 million is enough so I'm gonna do something I very rarely do in my videos I'm putting all of these players on the transfer list at my time at Palace I really can't see myself using them all that much and I do realize that their market values aren't exactly incredible but at least we'll get a little bit of something and hopefully that'll increase our budget to the point where we'll actually be able to bring quality players into this team. And after finally selling all the players I wanted to, we've now got 62 million in our budget, and I think that's more than enough to improve this squad. But remember, we've got to go in alphabetical order, starting from A all the way down to Z, so this isn't going to be as easy as you think. But starting with A, we're starting with Tammy Abraham, who currently plays for West Ham United. He's 25 years old, 80 overall. And if you guys have been watching my Chelsea series on my second channel, you know how much I absolutely love this guy in FC 24. And I have officially completed my first transfer as Crystal Palace managers. We've just spent 27 and a half million to bring Tammy Abraham to this squad. And I bet you're wondering why I went for Tammy Abraham first use a striker when I clearly said we needed a right back. Well, it's very simple. These were the only two right backs I could find whose last name begins with A. As we all know, Trent Alexander Arnold's just a little bit out of our budget. And while Sergio Aurier is pretty decent, he's 78 overall, 30 years old. In two or three seasons' time, we're going to have to replace him anyway. At least we know with Tammy Abraham. Abraham, that 27 and a half million won't go to waste within three seasons. But we do still desperately need a right back and now we're moving on to B and I think I know just who to bring in. I'm going for Riddle Baku from Wolfsburg. Granted he's 78 overall but he's only 25 years old and we all know that this guy's potential is pretty decent on FC 24. And boys, for 80 million on the dot we have thankfully sorted out our right back problem. And that's left us with 10 million in our budget but I think I'm going to leave the transfer window as it is. We've now got to sign a player whose last name begins with C and I want to approach that signing with much more money than just 10 million because we could be missing out on bringing in an absolute baller. So that does mean this is the team that's going to go into season one and honestly boys I do like the looks of it. You've got to remember majority of this team in the starting 11 aren't even close to touching 20 so by the end of this season hopefully anyway a lot of these players would have improved. But I'm not expecting anything spectacular. I'd be very happy for a mid-table finish but I don't want to be anywhere near that relegation zone. Well boys we've been nowhere near the relegation zone. We're 
six in the league at the end of season one. We got European football for season two. What did I tell you guys? Hodgson is a good manager, but he took Palace as far as he could, and it's time for me to take them to the next level. But apparently that doesn't mean the FA Cup, because Sheffield United knocked us out for that. And Watford knocked us out to the Carabao Cup in round two. Honestly, I just gave up at this point. But what did I tell you guys about the team, man? Look at the improvement in the squad. And Eze was actually our top goal scorer and assist to getting 20 goals and nine assists in 41 games. I didn't see that one coming, to be fair. I thought Abraham would have been the top goal scorer. But in only one season with Palace, we've taken them from the mid-table spot to the top six in the Prem. I'm bloody proud of that. And I actually think this team will hold its own in the Europa League. Obviously, we've got to transfer them to improve, but even like this, I reckon we'd at least make it out of the group stage. But before we go any further, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, leave this video a like and smash that subscribe button. So it's now our second year in charge of Palace, and we've got 80 million in our budget. That's almost double what we had last season. And I think it's time we got a better winger than Sluff. He's only 76 overall. He's the weakest link in this starting 11 now. So I think it's time we got somebody better. And if we have any money left over, we could do with a better DM than Lerma. I mean, alongside Slop, he is the weakest link in the starting 11 too. Obviously, we do have Tyreek Mitchell, who isn't 80 rated yet, but he's only 24 years old. I want to give this guy a little bit more time. But aside from our DM and left winger roles, I'm happy to leave the team as it is. But remember, the next player we bring in, their last name has to begin with C and honestly boys a left winger begin with C that's gonna be tough to find and after what felt like ages of search and I finally found the winger Samuel Chokwezi from AC Milan he's 25 years old 83 overall this guy's a beast the only problem is he's worth between 62 and 49 million so he's not exactly gonna be cheap either now I'm gonna start at 50 million that's just above their lowest market value region they only want 53 million oh my god this is actually gonna turn into a bargain I want a little bit less though I want to go 51 million. I'm stingy yet, aren't I? They've accepted it. That's absolutely fantastic. And there we have it, boys. It's official for 51 million. Samuel Chukwesi has left AC Milan and he's joined Crystal Palace. But that only leaves us with 25 million for our next transfer. That was the price we had to pay for bringing in Chukwesi. And obviously now I'll be focused on bringing in a better defensive midfielder than Lerman. But the question is, for 25 million, what defensive midfielder can I bring in whose last name begins with D? So I've just had an embarrassment moment to found the Corey who I thought looked pretty decent he's 81 rated 24 years old I went to go to buy him then I realized he already plays for Crystal Palace I'm telling you boys, trying to find a CDM whose last name begins with D is bloody difficult. But boys, I finally found one. Nicholas Dominguez. He's 26 years old, 79 rated. I don't even care how much this guy costs. I'm going to do whatever it takes to sign him. Okay, his market value is 18 and a half million. We may just be able to afford him. I'm going to start by offering 22 million on the dot. I'm hoping that they don't walk out on that. They want 24.9 million. We ain't going to have enough to actually sort his contract out. We ain't going to be able to do that. Okay, what if I I give them 20 million on the door and offer them a player. Maybe I just offer them Jefferson Luma. That way they're getting 29 millions worth. Please don't walk out. Please don't. Oh, they don't want Jefferson Luma. They want 24.9 million. Are you joking? Okay, let's drop it to 22 and a half million. Please, for God's sake, accept this. They want 23.7 million. No, we're going to go down to 22 and a half million and you are going to accept this. Please accept it. Please accept it. Thank you, Steve Cooper. Thank you, you absolute legend. And boys, that is how a transfer to window officially wrapped up with the signing of Nicholas Dominguez. And now the team looks like this going into season two. And I've got to say, with only two signings this year, we've massively improved this Crystal Palace team. Our front four looks good. Our midfield duo looks good. Our defense already looked pretty solid. I reckon we are more than ready for the season ahead. And we are, of course, in the Europa League after finishing sixth in the Prem last season. We're in Group A alongside Frankfurt and Alex and Randers FC, who's a team I've never actually heard of. Now, at the start of this year, I'd have been happy just to get to the knockouts, but I reckon with the team we've got, we can at least make it to the semi-final. So we are at the end of season two of Palace and we have finished fifth this time, one place higher than the previous season and we were only three points outside the top four this time. I'm telling you now boys, we're getting closer and closer to getting into the Champions League. But believe it or not, we've won the FA Cup beating Wolves 2-1 in the final. I genuinely thought we'd have won the Premier League sooner than we won the FA Cup, so this is a massive surprise. But we only made it to round four.
four of the Carabao Cup. And to be honest, boys, this isn't a surprise. But now it's time to see how we did in the Europa League. And honestly, boys, I reckon we may have won it. So we actually topped Group A by one point. We go straight to the round of 16 whilst Anderlecht go to the prelim round. But we got absolutely annihilated by Inter Milan in the round of 16. 6-2 on aggregate. Oh my God, we have just been humble. And here I am saying we're getting closer to the Champions League and we get absolutely destroyed by a team like Inter Milan. But looking at this starting 11, I'm not being funny, boys. I don't see how we've done that badly against Inter Milan. This team can actually handle some of the big boys in the prep. And this time, Abraham was our top goal scorer. 20 goals, 13 assists in 54 games. That's the Tammy Abraham I know and love. But with two seasons in and two years on the trot, we have qualified for European football. That is something to be proud of if you're a Palace fan. And with the team looking like this, boys, I can confidently say next year we should be gunning for top four football. So it's now our third year in charge of Crystal Palace. And as you can see, we've got the coaching system completely sorted out now. Now, last year, we made it to the round of 16 in the Europa League before getting annihilated by Inter Milan. And if we want to get further than that, we've got to make changes in the starting 11. And I think we start by bringing in a stronger left back than Mitchell. Granted, he's 81 rated, but if we want to do well in the Europa League, like I've just said, we definitely need somebody better. And I think we go for a better centre back than Anderson. He's 81 rated, and alongside Tyreek Mitchell, he's actually one of the weakest things in the starting 11. And I honestly think once we sort those positions out, we are ready for the Europa League. And this time, we've got 136 million to spend, which is so goddamn helpful considering we're not in charge of who we actually bring in. And I'll be honest, I can't think of a single centre-back or left-back whose last name begins with E. I am completely lost, and this is going to take a while. Boys, it took me ages, but I finally found a left-back. Purvis as stupid in, 27 years old, 82 overall. I can't lie, boys, I'm so relieved. I've been searching for so long, and I finally found a left-back whose last name begins with E. And boys, for the region of 31 and a half million, we have made him a Crystal Palace player. So now our left-back situation is sorted. Now we just need a centre-back whose last name begins with G. And honestly, I think I actually just thought of a centre-back who we can bring in. We can bring in Gabriel, who also plays for Napoli. He's 27 years old, 86 overall. This guy will massively improve that back line. And the best part is we can absolutely afford him. He's worth between 73 million and 58 million. And he is our most expensive signing yet as we We've just spent 65 million on the dot to make him a Crystal Palace player. And now Dominguez is actually our weakest link in the start of 11. He's 82 overall. I know I only brought him in last year, but if I was going to spend that money anyway, it would be to bring in a new CDM. Now I'm going to have a quick look because the next player we have to bring in's last name has to begin with H. And honestly, that could be kind of tricky. But I found Pierre Emile Hoybier almost straight away. He's 85 overall, 29 years. This guy could solve our defensive midfield problem. But his market value is definitely higher than our budget. So if we're going to do this, we're going to have to pull some strings. Now we've got 31 mil in our budget and bear in mind, we've got a contract to sort out afterwards. So I'm going to offer them 27 and a half million and that's not all I'm going to offer. I'm going to offer them Dominguez as part of this deal and they may just go for it. They've actually gone for it. Posta Coglu's accepted the transfer offer and it looks like we are one step closer to getting Hoybier in the team. We're going to give him 84k a week, 770 grand signing bonus. Please God above let Hoybier accept this offer. He wants 86k, he can have it as far as I'm concerned. We have just made Pierre-Emile Hoybier a Crystal Palace player. And now the team looks like this now that the transfer window is done. And honestly, boys, forget the Europa League. This team should be competing in the Champions League. Obviously, our goalkeeper could be better. And maybe a stupid in is a weak link in the team. But right now, I don't care. The rest of the team can pretty much carry those two players. But now we're in the Community Shield final against Liverpool. And looking at that starting 11, I'll be real, we may be winning our second trophy in charge of Palace. It's at Wembley against Liverpool. Let's see who's going to come out on top. And we do a stupid in and Abraham gain the goals and that's our second trophy won with Palace. I knew it was a shocking start in 11 Liverpool pulled out but if we are beating Liverpool that's putting us in a great position for the rest of the season. And we all once again in the Europa League this time in Group F alongside Stad Rene, AZ Alkamar and HJK Helsinki. And let's be honest boys, not only should we be topping this group with flying colours, I reckon and we've got a very good chance of winning this entire damn thing. But one way or another, I want this team playing Champions League football next year. It is way too good not to be. So season three is wrapped up and we have finished inside the top four. We are finally in the Champions League, boys. We finished two points clear of Liverpool as well. That in its own right is a massive achievement. But Man City absolutely destroyed us in the FA Cup, knocking us out of round four. And Fleetwood Town knocked us out of the Carabao Cup. 
Fleetwood Town. I'm just saying if the FA Cup and Carabao Cup reflect how we've done in the Europa League, we are looking at a very early exit. Well, it's a total 180. We've won the Europa League, beating Atalanta 2-1 in the final. That's our third trophy won now at Palace. That's amazing, boys. We've got a top four finish and the Europa League. We had Champions League football guaranteed no matter what. And just look at this team, boys. I'm not being funny. We only need a couple more players and I actually reckon we'll go pretty damn far in the Champions League next season. And Tammy Abraham is once again our top goal scorer 27 goals 7 assists in 54 games this man is just an absolute machine on FC24 and like I've just said boys we've got top 4 football in the Prem we've won the Europa League this has been by a mile our best season so far and this team already looks incredible and bear in mind before we get into season 4 we've got a full transfer window to improve this team I genuinely feel like season 4 is going to be our most successful season yet so it's now our 4th year in charge of Palace and we've got 184 million to spend so it's definitely not the budget standing in our way. It's that bloody alphabetical order. Now, I think getting a better keeper than Anderson is vital if we want to do well in the Champions League this year. Granted, he's 83 overall and he's done really well for us since season one, but I think he'd let us down massively if we kept him in the team in the Champions League. I've got to say, though, boys, Henderson is the only part of the team I want to improve. The rest of it I'm happy with. And the next player's last name has to begin with I, and I'm not being funny. I cannot think of a single goalkeeper whose last name begins with I. I mean, after ages of looking, I found Daniel Iverson and I'm not being funny boys we're in the Champions League now we need somebody better not worse than Henderson now I won't lie to you lot I've given up trying to find a goalkeeper whose last name begins with I so instead I'm just going to try and find a player whose last name begins with I and then we'll go from there and luckily I remembered Elias who's only 22 years old 78 rated a former Barcelona player and he'll be a decent second choice winger and for just 21.1 million we have finally moved on from the letter I and we're moving further along the alphabet and I'm not going to lie after all the hassle that I've just been through I'm so so goddamn happy that part is over. But that now leaves us with 160 million. Now we're moving on to the letter J. And honestly, boys, I'm still in a pickle on who we can actually bring in whose last name begins with J. Especially if we want to replace Henderson. And once again, I can't think of a goalkeeper's name whose last name begins with J. Maybe we should try and find a fullback whose last name begins with A. Because Purvis Estupinin is alongside Henderson, one of the weakest links in this team. And if we can get somebody better, this defensive lineup will look absolutely incredible. And I can't lie, I think of this one out in about two seconds. Reese James from Chelsea. He's 26 years old, 85 overall. Boys, this one is a no-brainer. But he's already been approached by Newcastle United, so we're going to have to act pretty fast if we want to make this happen. And boys, we've only had to spend just over 51 million, and considering how good Reese James actually is, I consider that the bargain of the century. And now our back line looks absolutely incredible. We just need a better goalkeeper than Anderson, and I'm willing to call the transfer window a day. And we've still got over 100 million to spend, so once again, the budget isn't the issue it's just trying to find a goalkeeper whose last name begins with k and boys we've finally done it gregor Kobel from dortmund he's 28 years old 90 overall i mean could we really ask for anybody better and he's worth between 101 and 81 million so he's more than affordable with our current budgets and that is our transfer window done as we have brought gregor Kobel to crystal palace for 88 million on the dot and now the team looks like this going into season four and now that we've actually got a world class goalkeeper in between the sticks not only do i think we can win the prem this year i reckon we've got a good chance to win the champions league and i know some of you might be annoyed that i brought reese james into the team but i'm a chelsea fan if i'm okay with it you should be too but now we've got a big game on our hands manchester city in the super cup the europa league champions versus the champions league champions now i can safely say if we beat city here that definitely puts us in a very good position going for oh, come on really i mean we did take them to extra time and we didn't get absolutely annihilated so that is definitely Definitely a positive. But we are in the Champions League for the first time with Palace in Group A alongside Atalanta, Fenerbahce and FC St. Garland. And let's be honest boys, with the team we've got right now, we should not only be swamping the group stage, we should absolutely be getting to that final. Well boys, Season 4 is done and dusted and we were so close to winning the Prem, man. Second in the league, well I say close, we were 9 points off Arsenal. But still, I feel like with the quality we got in our team, we should absolutely be getting closer to winning the Prem. But we have won another FA Cup, this time beating Burnley 3-1 in the final. That's our fourth trophy now won with Palace. And this time we made the quarters of the Carabao Cup and we're losing 2-1 to Liverpool. Last we've actually done
an off decent in the Carabao Cup. But the one we've been waiting for, the Champions League. Let's see if we crashed out, we did well, or we got to the final. So we topped Group A with flying colours, six games undefeated, and we cruised to the round of 16. And there we absolutely obliterated Fiorentina 5-1 on aggregate. That is a cracking start. And we just got past Juve in the quarters 4-3 on aggregate. That's two Italian teams we've beaten straight away. And boys, look who's left Barcelona, Napoli, Tottenham Hotspur. We haven't exactly got easy opponents. But we've beaten Napoli 4-2 in the semi-finals and we're playing Tottenham Hotspur in the Champions League final. I mean, let's be honest, this is a must-win game for so many reasons, but the main one, we cannot let the bottle drops beat us in a final. And just look at the stats from our front four. They really did know when the back of that net was this season, didn't they? And this is the team that's going to go into the final and I'm not going to lie, boys, I actually feel kind of sorry for Spurs because this team is ridiculous. One thing I'm happy about is Mark Guy, Eze and Ulysse are still in this team. At the start, I said I wanted to build a team around those three and that's exactly what we've done. And considering we could only bring in players in alphabetical order, we brought some fantastic talent into their squad. With the likes of 9 to 1 rated Koble, 86 rated Reese James, 9 to rated Chuck Wheezy, and my personal favourite Tammy Abraham. He's a baller on the second channel and is an even bigger baller on the main channel. But now we've got a must win game in our hands. We cannot let the bottle jaws beat us to win the Champions League. I simply can't allow it. Got back who on the ball now. This guy can actually play as a right winger as well, but he's found a least cut inside. Oh, ref pen? Surely? Oh, come on, man, ref. Give us a break. In the last final Spurs run, you gave a penalty for no reason. Why not do it again? Release is coming forward. I'm looking for that run. I haven't found it, though. Come on, Palace. What are you playing at? Spurs are pushing for... Oh, no. Reese James has been done for a kipper there by Kulisevsky. He's brought it back. He's got it back. He's gone. Oh, come on. That's way too easy. That was so poor from me, man. Spears opened us up like a tin of beans there. That is definitely not the start. We were after 1-0 to Spears already. We need to bucker our ideas up. But here's Reese James on the ball. I tell you what, he can get one back straight away. Oh, my God. Reese. James, of all people, I did not expect to get the equaliser. Pretty much straight from kickoff, Reese James gets the ball, he runs up the pitch, finesses it bottom right bins, keeper doesn't stand a chance. He might be a Palace player, but the boy still bleeds blue, he cannot let Spurs win a trophy. But here comes Spurs once again, we need to put a foot in Gabriel, that's a phenomenal challenge. Okay, Spurs are coming forward once again, we need to contain this, make sure they get no chances, no space, don't give them a shred of space. Oh, that's a fantastic block. Block. Tell you what, we've got a counter-attack on the go. Chuck Weezy's coming down the left-hand side. Can we get the pace over Julian? I think we have. We may make this 2-1 just like that. And we do! On the stroke at the 40th minute, Chuck Weezy takes the ball from his own off, runs the entire length of the pitch, and bangs it top right. Vince, that's 2-1 to us. I don't care who you do that against. That is still a phenomenal goal. From 1-0 down to 2-1 up, the bottle jobs have bottled yet another league. Isn't that poetic? What a save! Oh my god, Koval. That's magnificent. Magnificent. Spurs are coming forward once again. They've got the bit between their teeth, but to be fair to us, we are defending really well. And now it's our turn. Can we find that run from Tammy Abraham? No, we cannot. Christensen, you are not playing for Spurs. You treat it. As long as they don't do the HRS technique, I am pretty safe from conceding. They go short. So they may actually do it in the end. Oh, I don't like this. The game, the bit between the teeth. No, that's a great block. And again, great save. Oh my God, how we didn't concede there, I'll never know. Spurs have been all over us in the second half. I've got to give us so much credit though. We have defended incredibly well. But now it's our turn. Eze's on the ball. He's not really got many options to come with him. Baku though. He's up against Rahulion. He's got the pace. He's got everything going for it. Oh, this has got to be it. Surely. Oh, Spears. No. We have got less than 10 minutes to hold on to this lead, man. And honestly, it looks like we will be just about holding on to it. Spears are destroying us right now. It's extra time. We've got the chance to kill the game dead here. Olise is now on the ball. Okay. If we play this right, cut inside. He's on his left foot. This is beautiful. And he's got a decent weak foot as well. And that is the third. That is us lifting the Champions League at the end of this game. We have beaten Tottenham Hotspur 3-1. For all the chances, for all the attacks that Spurs have had, they couldn't put it into the back of the net, whereas we could do that three times. Baku gave it to Elise, and Elise just did the rest. He's got a strong weak foot now that we've been training him properly. He puts that top left bins, and he's secured Palace's place in history. And more importantly, we have made Crystal Palace the best team in the world. And I've got to admit, boys, that was not easy. Do this yourselves and let me know how you get on because that alphabetical order stuff i'm telling you now that is tricky and boys if you enjoyed this video you should definitely click here to watch me do a 10 season takeover with
with Wrexham. 